Welcome back. Today we're going to continue our journey of uh, converting our window object in libweb to IDL. Um, in case you haven't seen yesterday's video, uh, you might want to do that first. That's where we started. Um, I've done a little bit more work off camera, so now the IDL file has grown a little bit. Uh, we're down to like 40 lines now. Um, and today I want to specifically get the window or worker global scope um, in there as well, which I briefly mentioned yesterday. Um, so we already have this mix in. Uh, we already use it for the worker global scope. Uh, so let's just head there. Uh, most of it is fixed meat, so this shouldn't be too much work. So essentially we just need these five things implemented um, and then we can do the rest and that's going to be uh, then appear on both the um, worker global scope and the window later on if we implement that. Uh, let's start this by merging APM. So um, did this one yesterday, uh, just preparing for this. Um, so let's see what I did here. Um, yeah, so this was just uh, getting rid of some fix me's here implementing some missing code. Um, right, here as well. These are relatively simple. And then a third one, uh, another fix me gone. And then I just moved everything over into a new class. So we now have this CPP file. So these IDL mix-ins um, don't generate their own interface, right? Like they are interface mix-ins. So they sort of merge with other interfaces and then they disappear into the void. So whenever you see one of these, we don't necessarily have a CPP or header file for them, but in some cases it makes sense um, to share the implementation. Uh, I already did this for fetch, so we have the body.h, yeah, this one. Um, this is the body mix in from the fetch spec. Uh, which is shared between request and response. So they have a bunch of methods in common. And so what I did there was just have a few virtual methods for the specific uh, bits that need to know whether it's a request or response. And then everything else can just um, rely on this. Uh, did something similar for this. So we have all the implementations here uh, in a wrapped in a class called window or worker global scope mixin, uh, which only has a one uh, pure virtual uh, method called the simple, which is used to retrieve the actual underlying object. Um, yeah, so we just returned it this pointer. And this is already hooked up to the worker global scope and today we can do the same to the window. So let's hit the merge button here. Uh, Andrew re reviewed it, so thank you for that, Andrew. Uh, the one comment uh, was pretty good, but I tried it and that didn't really work out, so I'll signal that. Merging. Cool. And then let's pull these changes. So we fetch upstream. And rebase on top of that, no conflicts. And then let's confirm that these changes are here. So we now need the worker global scope uh, header. And that indeed now contains the mixin. So let's start by pulling that into the window. Uh, not much should happen because these are not exposed. I don't like that. Oh yeah, also don't like my Clang format still. That's fine. Um, oh, this is generated code, so it doesn't really know about that. So let's just add that here. And we are missing an include. Okay, and then we are missing some virtual functions. Uh, 
I guess that can just go here. Where is this from? Event targets. Yeah, we usually leave these comments to show where a certain virtual overwrite is um, from. All right, let's try to compile this. Might kick off a pretty large build in the background here. Ah, only 2000 files. Um, and then we should be able to, now we have um, the common uh, implementation uh, available to the window. So this now pulled in, let's go here. This pulled in these five methods so far. We still have a copy of them on the window object, but we should be able to one by one put them into the IDL file, get rid of the window implementation and use this one. And then later on, once that's done, we can just, um, instead of adding them here, uh, just include the mixin. So let's just try if that works, as I hope it will. Uh, let's start by adding. Yeah, let's start by copying from here. So fix me, replace these with window includes. once we have feature parity. All right, so this would be the origin. Um, origin getter, we have one. And then in the window CPP file, origin, we can get rid of this. Uh, we should be able to get rid of this. I don't like, oh, interesting, okay. Uh, maybe I should have backtracked here a little bit. Because let's just get this compiling first. So now it's complaining about is secure context because we're now inheriting a thing that also has an is secure context method. Um, and so this needs to be HTML is secure context. Hopefully. Uh, because the other one is this one, which is a JS function or uh, the underlying implementation for a JS function. And then that should be fine. And this would be HTML uh, hook up. It's called to window. This prepares us to use the shared implementations from this class. Okay. I'm just going to go and go ahead and commit that. And then we can fix it up later on if this build turns out to not build. Um, right. Let's get rid of the origin getter again. And then hopefully this will use this one. A relevant settings object, origin serialize. And this one does Associated document origin serialize. It's slightly different, but it should be all right. 
And more importantly, this one has a spec comment, so this one is correct. <laughs> That's always the rule of thumb. Uh, let's see. Origin. Can go. Origin getter can go. And on the window we have it. Let's kick off a new build here. And then hopefully that works. And that would be port window.origin2 IDL. Hold on. Oh, I committed this change, didn't I? Yep. So let's get rid of that again. And do a fix up. And then the next one would be, yes, I can't commit from here, fine. Oh, right, okay. The next one would be uh, a secure context. So let's steal that from here as well. here and then is secure context getter can go and is secure context attribute can go as well as here And this should be the exact same implementation as here. Yeah, a secure context relevant settings object from this. And this is basically the same, yeah. I mean, this is slightly different, but I think they should do the same thing. Goodbye, okay. Okay, we have three files again. How's the build doing? Still building. And that would be port window is secure context to IDL. Nice, all right. Uh, next one. Cross origin isolated, another boolean. Goes here. And then cross. Do we even have that? We don't. Well, <laughs> that makes it simple. Um, well, I suppose we don't even need that change and it will just magically appear once we do this instead because it already has an implementation under the hood it's just not exposed yet uh, so let's skip this one even easier and then we have two functions b2a and a2b
Let's start with B2A. This can go. And this can also go. And in the header, this can also go. All right. Window B to A. The build is not building. Um, let's check that out in a second. What are you mad about? It's in the generated code. No matching call for create. So let's check that out. Line six five seven. Oh, it's our implementation of origin that it doesn't like. Oh, it returns. Oh, I see. Okay. Origin. Origin. Do we have another getter for that? We do. Uh, that is rather unfortunate. But I think we can probably overwrite that. Where's that? Hmm. Let's see. I'm not sure if that's even used. What happens if we get rid of it? Also, it's just, yeah, no. <laughs> Like if you can call that directly, then that should not really hold us back. Let's try to get rid of this build again. And the fact that it didn't even have a link uh, shows us that it's sort of just a made up concept and not really something from the spec. Let's see if that build works now. And then we did B to A, and then the last one should be A to B. Making good progress here. So that goes here. And then A to B. Goodbye. And then the window. A to B. Yeah, this is just terrible. Like. The fact that we have to manually um, check the argument count and then to string it and then create an actual string from the deprecated string and all this stuff just goes away. It's very nice. And then we should have the property left. Yes. Bye. And let's once again restart the build. Uh, something crashed. I'm not exactly sure. The build is building. And then um, we should be good to start including this. Let's see how the worker um, does it. So in worker global scope, we just do this. Okay. So we should end up doing this. Except with window down here. Uh, let's see. That is. Is that B2A or A to B? We did A to B now, okay. Uh, we need not this. We do need this. 
we don't need this right now. We do need this, not this, but this and this. No, yes, yes. I can't spell. And then let's fix up this commit. Build is still building. And then once all that's done, uh, we should be able to actually do this. Um, window includes window or worker global scope. And that might need an IDL include. Yep. And then this could go. And then once we have done this, uh, the one miss missing uh, property should magically appear. So that was cross origin isolated. So let's check that once the build is done. Uh, it's not very happy. Oh, did we forget one? B2A found. Uh, what starts? That should be fine though. Let's check it out again. Like the name should not clash. This is usually the case. So we have post message here and we have a post message here. Um, so I'm not sure why this is complaining. Member found by ambiguous name lookup. Was it just a weird thing because I did a rebase? Sometimes it's possible to upset the compiler if you temporarily take away <laughs> some source files. Uh, that makes sense, of course. So let's see if that works. And this is great progress. I really like this. So. If we check out this, like once all of these are converted to IDL as well, they will just magically appear on both the window global object and the worker global scope. Um, so we have various functionality that is only exposed on the window right now, even though it should be exposed on both. So like set timeout, we obviously have that, but it's somewhere hard coded on the window. Set timeout, yeah. So we have a set interval here, a set timeout here. And so uh, doing this first is a good step to avoid then having to do the work again later on for the global scope. Although we will need to move the implementation. So for example, let's see in the window, CPP. That's timeout. Um, so this generated glue code will obviously disappear, uh, but the set timeout impl will need to move um, probably to the window or global window or worker global scope .cpv file, and then this one. Oh, that's more tricky. Do we need at this pointer in this case? Yeah, we might need. 
Yeah, so this will, will need some more thought. Um, especially because, yeah, timers, for example, are stored on the window right now. They're probably not stored on the worker global scope. Um, no, okay. Yeah, so this will need more work, but you know, we, we'll get there. Uh, just moving code around slowly. Uh, right, so let's look at the diff of this. Uh, ignore this. So we got rid of these four, got rid of the fix me, edit and includes, and then should be good. So that would be include the mix in in window dot idea. Uh, we can't fit one of these. Okay, shame. Include. Now I'm just gonna see if that's no. It's still not happy. Well, then we have to actually fix something here, I guess. And somehow it's both B2A and A2B. Do we forget to remove a declaration or whatever? B2A, A2B. A2B. No, we did not. A2B. Yeah, that's the declaration. That's our implementation. I feel like this should be fine. <laughs> uh, let's see. B2A found in multiple base classes of different types. But isn't it the same for let's say um, origin. Oh, is that because it's called origin getter? Well, that's somewhat unfortunate. Hmm. Also, how does the window Uh, the worker global scope do this. Yeah, so this one just includes window or worker global scope, which clearly defines these, which the worker global scope doesn't define itself, but it pulls it in from here. So why on earth is that not working? Just a sanity check. No, it's definitely broken. Um, that's really annoying. We could resort to Googling. Or is that because there's an A to B function somewhere in the global scope? I am really not sure. Um, what if we were to rename it just to check? A to B test. 
or rather uppercase and then in the global scope that would be like this b2a test because i'm really not sure why it's just complaining about do these two specifically and especially if it works in the worker global scope but not in the oh hold on a second This one is not generated as global. That is probably the reason why. Because on the window IDL, we have an attribute global equals window. And that causes different code generation. Um, I'm not super sure what to do about this. Do they say derived class scopes are not an exception to this rule? Your example can be improved by specifying that you want to use using. Are we missing a using somewhere? That would be silly. Hmm. Uh, well, this is not going anywhere, so let's get rid of this again. A to B, B to A. Um, start over here. I mean, maybe we can get around it somehow with like a magic attribute here. Like we do have uh, implemented S, but I'm not sure if it helps. You, you just really don't like this, do you? Remember between you find the multiple base classes of different types. Now what if just for the fun of it, and I have really no idea if this would do anything, but let's just try using a window window or worker global scope mix in A to B and B to A. Maybe it's gonna magically tell the compiler that these are the ones we want. Uh, we will see in roughly 450 built objects. Um, and we still have to test all the others just to make sure I didn't mess up. Any conversions? So that would be origin, is secure context, cross origin, isolated new, and then B2A and A2B. And then eventually, hopefully, the window class should shrink a little bit once all of these are gone. Because um, they do make up like, I don't know, quite a bit of it. 
and especially in the CPP file. Uh, let's see. So like we have a bunch of general stuff in here. And then starting from yeah, roughly here, uh, 1,300 to 1,800 is all C++ JavaScript implementations. Um, so this can probably be simplified a lot, especially because we always defer to impl. So like this is a screen X getter, which just calls a function called screen X, which returns an int. And then the IDL glue code can just call that directly. And so we don't need to actually duplicate uh, this method here, which is going to be nice. Also, where is screen X defined in the IDL? Because I haven't seen it yet. Window screen X. MDN nicely has a link to the spec. Oh, it's in some CSS spec. All right. Do we have an interface? We do. Uh, I'm not sure if we support partial interface. Let's check that out. I'm pretty sure we don't. Yeah, no, we don't. Okay. So we will need to implement that or we just copy it onto the window interface directly. So like at the end of here. But this is sort of like a um, mix-in interface, except you don't have to explicitly include it and it only applies to the window. Uh, let's see how that build is doing. Almost done. Look at that chewing on the window uh, worker exposed interfaces. Yeah, this looks much more promising now. And that's a good reminder that I still don't know everything about C++ and sometimes I'm just making stuff up as I go. Uh, for example, by Googling and then guessing the right solution. Like today. Hey, it works. Okay. Um, let's test it. So we want to test all of these. So let's open a console and try window.origin. It works. Window dot is secure context. It also works because it's HTTPS. Very nice. Um, now this one should be new. Window dot cross origin isolated. Also true. Not totally sure what it means, but I'll believe it. Um, window dot a to b. Uh, it does something. And window dot b to a. Uh, oh, that's a different character. Okay. Window dot b to a. Nope. Come on. B to a. Uh, doesn't like that either. I'm not sure what this weird character is, but we'll just assume it works. Uh, window B to A. Let's just pass something. Yeah, it works. Okay, cool. Nice. All right. We can commit that. And I think then we're done for today. Because uh, this is basically all that I wanted to achieve. Uh, let's see. We have this fix. Um, cool. So stash these away. Uh, let's go here. And we want to edit this one. And 
attempt this one. So, B2A goes here. Just a small rebase and then A to B. Lovely. And then the last bit. Uh, yeah, this one's fine. to get rid of the claim format change. And then we have libweb slash HTML include the window or worker global scope mixin in window.idl. Very nice. Uh, let's take a final look at the outcome of today. I closed it, very good. Uh, here we go. So, we now include everything from the window or worker global scope. And assuming that someone added new functionality to that interface mix-in, um, does it in the right place, they will just magically appear here, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.